Hey there, Swiss Council Wine Guy. We are back again with another wine review. Starting off this, or kicking off this 2024 wine review season. Wow, it's just crazy to say that. I don't know about you, but my 2023 went by way too fast, especially when doing these wine reviews. <laughs> All right, so hopefully we can kind of slow down 2024 with the wine reviews. So I hope you had a good 2023. I hope uh, you came into 2024 with safety, love, peace, and joy. But let's get to the reviews. We're going to be doing Bonterra wines again. I believe a previous review, uh, or another review, I did uh, the Bonterra Cabernet. Uh, I don't know if I did any of these before in earlier years of reviewing, but I will put it in the content in the description below so you'll see at the end of this video maybe a link. Uh, but today, oh, but first, for those who are new to me and watching my reviews for 2024, I like to call these everyday drinking wines. Every now and then there's an exception, but Everyday drinking wines. These are wines that you see on the shelves of many places where you shop for wine. Liquor store, grocery store, wine shop. You'll find these wines on the shelves. And I select a few, give them a taste, and give you my opinion what I think about the wines. Utilizing the infamous thumb rating system. Keep it, keep it very simple. Thumbs up says, I recommend that wine. It's a pretty solid wine. You can't go wrong with it for everyday drinking wine. Three quarters. This is a wine, you know, that uh, I would share with my friends. You know, I would, I would, you know, definitely, you know, keep some of this on hand. Halfway, you know what? Uh, well, something about that wine didn't work for my palate. It does not make it a bad wine. It just didn't work for my palate. And I'll let you know why it didn't. Thumbs down, I'm definitely going let you know why that wine was a thumbs down to me. All right? And every now and then, there's the infamous double thumbs up. This is double thumbs up. It's a wine that could probably make a good collection. You know, a wine that you can sit on at age. I recommend you buy a few bottles and sit on it. Every now and then, we get some of those. It's pretty rare, but every now and then. So, without further ado, we're going to get back into some Bonterra wines for this 2024 season. Today, we're going to be doing some white wines. The Bonterra Chardonnay Vintage 2022. Organic, made from organic grapes, and the Sauvignon Blanc Vintage 2022, made from organic grapes. Uh, grapes of both of these are sourced from uh, the Mendocino County area, California. Uh, for those who are new to Bonterra, uh, Bonterra is uh, sustainably farm, organic, you know, uh, climate neutral. They try to do all the things that are right, you know, for the land, for the soil, you know, producing and also uh, growing their grapes. You know, producing their wines, you know, so like I said, you know, pretty clean tasting, you know, uh, just a quick flashback, you know, I didn't, I didn't, was overly excited about the Cabernet, but it was very clean tasting, you know, if you're looking for a clean tasting wine, that would be a good one, the Cabernet. So, but today we're doing the Bonterra Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. So the Bonterra Chardonnay is going to be, 50% of it is going to be uh, uh, fermented straight and 50% of it is going to be uh, secondary for a minute, mallow, you know, just to soften out some acidity and then doing a final blend of the two. Then it's, then it's going to be aged in both French and American oak, 50-50, on the leaves, you know, for a few months, you know, and then again, a, a, a final blend on those two to give it you know, a little bit more structure, a little more richness, a little bit more, you know, depth to it, you know, so that's uh, the Chardonnay. Sauvignon Blanc, okay, uh, for a minute, you know, what can you say about Sauvignon Blanc? Fermented, uh, this isn't going to have secondary, but it's going to have just the right fruity qualities to it. And those of you who've been following me for quite some time know that I always do Sauvignon Blanc after everything else, especially if it's from New Zealand. But I do it after everything else because that uh, great fruit and the intensity of acidity kills everything else behind it. Okay? Now, what I do want to say is that I like having wines from the same winery, so I can get an idea of that footprint. Now, I know they like to do, you know, like uh, uh, ripe, fruity, fresh-tasting wines. I got that in the Cabernet to see if it exists with the Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc as well. Screw caps on both of these, and I just spilled, <laughs> you know, but where I will go, if it's a screw cap, if the wine tastes bad, it probably went into the bottle that way, okay? And here is the Sauvignon Blanc. Now, both of these smell fantastic. All right, let me clean up my mess here a little bit. Both of these smell fantastic. 
fantastic. And in fact, after I poured the Sauvignon Blanc, it just killed whatever smell was coming out of this one. <laughs> All right, so alcohol, 13.5% uh, on the Chardonnay, 13% on the Sauvignon Blanc. So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to smell, let's get that over here. I probably should not have poured it straight away, but let's smell the Chardonnay. All right, you look at that color. So what we have here is clear with yellow, slight, slight greenish hues, but more clear to yellow here. You know, again, aged in both French and American oak on the nose. Ah, oh, you get nice citrus. More like Granny Smith apple. Ooh, wow. I'm hoping that that's not influencing me, but okay, All right? It probably was. So that citrus here is gonna be more lemon. I had to cover. I had to cover up my Sauvignon Blanc, and I was like, I was like, do I smell grapefruit here? <laughs> so that's why I covered it up. Like, oh my god, let's let's see. But now when I did that, it just goes to show, you know, the 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 bouquet, the aromatics coming out of both of these wines is just so there, right? That I had to cover up this Sauvignon Blanc in order to smell the Chardonnay. You do get a subtle hint of vanilla, but it's very, very subtle in the background. Okay, it's not in the foreground, in the background. And a little bit of spice and and some like smoke, ash. Can okay, I say ash, not smoke? Okay, so that's that. Now, let's go over here to the Sauvignon Blanc. All right. Ooh, a Sauvignon Blanc is like nice. I mean, when I took my hand off of it, when I, when I suppressed the, the aroma here, and I took my hand off of it, you definitely picked up more of the fruitiness, a lot more like melons, you know, coming out of this one here. But then, as more air came into it, you got more, you uh, started getting more of the grapefruit, but then the melon comes back. But I'm glad I did that, you know, that the grapefruit wasn't just so up in my face I couldn't smell anything else. So that was nice. Let's try it again. All right, here we go. Yep, still. Now, after I aerated some more, now our uh, grapefruit comes through. Hmm, nice. And there's like a, a soft floral note in the background. Mm, wow, I like that. Very nice. I mean, kind of like subdued it a little bit. So now, tasting-wise, two-step process. First step is acidity. Second, uh, tannins. Believe it or not, you can't get some tannins in white wines. It's very rare, but you can't get some. Then the second taste is an overall mouthfeel. I'm going to taste the Chardonnay uh, for the acidity and formulate my opinion. Then I'm going to go, before I give it to you though, I'm going to formulate it. Then go to the Sauvignon Blanc. Then I'm going to go back and see if it plays nice. Okay? Here we go. Ah, let's move this out of the way. <laughs> Rip. Okay. Good acidity. Soft tannin. I'm going to taste it again, but I already had an impression just on that taste. Wow. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, Okay. Very fresh tasting. Very clean tasting. I like the citrus. I like the, the kind of like apple, Granny Smith apple taste to it. You know, great acidity. Nice mouth. Nice finish. I mean, very good finish. Very, very pleasing, this Chardonnay, you know, uh, chilled and as it warms up on my palate, you know, it's just like, wow. Wow. This is crafted, crafted real nice. We totally can get a little bit of a toastiness, but I'll get that subtle, more like cedar in the subtle, 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 just like on the nose. Subtle hint of vanilla. Wow. Mm. I mean, I can just drink this. You know where I'm going with this one, right? So I'm going to put a little bit more in here so that 
I can come back to it later. So that's enough of that. Opinions are formed on this one. Now let's go to the Sauvignon Blanc again. Both 2022. Oh no. Uh, we did the whole melon, we did the whole uh, uh, grapefruit nose and subtle floral notes. It's still there. First step is the ritz. Second step, let's see how the mouthfeel is, uh, you know, what the taste components are. Mm. Again, nice acidity. It just just on that first taste, I can probably go back to the Chardonnay. I mean, you find a uniformity here between these two. Nice. But, again, also has a, a, a nice finish. It's not like a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc kind of finish. It has a very nice finish to it. It goes in between, you know, a little bit of grapefruit, but subtle. More like a red grapefruit to me. And um, the melon. Mm, let's go back and forth. Very nice. You definitely can see how they tamed the citrus part of it. You know, with, I mean, when I, when I use the term residual sugar, I'm using it loosely in this case. Not that it's sweet, but I like how they found that balance with the acidity and the, the, the citrus tanginess that exists in this wine. You know, and it had just enough residual sugar to bring it pretty much in the balance for my, for my palate. Just the way I would drink my uh, lemonade. Uh, some people like, you know, like sugar down lemonade. I want to taste the lemon. I want to feel the acidity. And I just want a kiss of sweetness in my lemonade. And this is what I get here, but this is a lemon. It's, it's grapefruit. I do the same thing with grapefruit juice too. Like freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. Nice. That's what this reminds me of. Mmm. All right, so again, nice. You do get that, just like the grapefruit juice. I like the way it makes my mouth water. You get that nice fruitiness. It occurred in this case, talking about melon, but again, this will create grapefruit. You know, a nice fruitiness, the grapefruit, you know, and um, more like pink grapefruit, not red, pink. But then it finishes with that uh, kind of uh, grapefruit bitterness, but still balanced. I mean, I, I like that because I like fresh grapefruit juice. All right, now, let's go back. I got my opinion on that one, too. Let's go back here. Mm. The Chardonnay holds its own. You can go back and forth. I like the consistency across the board here. Light, clean, very refreshing on both of these. So, it was come to wine, guys. I'm going to give the Bonterra 2022 Chardonnay. And the Bon Terre 2022 Sauvignon Blanc, they both get a double thumbs up. Both double thumbs up. Very nice, very clean. Uh, I like drinking nice, crisp, you know, flavorful white wines in the winter time. And these definitely hit that mark for me. Delicious wines. Both of these did an excellent job. I like these better than the Cabernet. So, double thumbs up for the Chardonnay 2022 and double thumbs up for the Sauvignon Blanc 2022 from Bonterra Wines. And this is your Wisconsin Wine Guy setting it off here in 2024. Telling you as always, let your palate be the guide when selecting your wine. And I'll see you next time. Ciao! <laughs>